So uh, the questions are quite, con most of them are quite conceptual. So uh, I thankfully, I don't think I need to do much calculation. I hope I'm ready to. Um, so what I thought I would do is go through the questions and answer them. And um, so when they are all one point, so they are probably all either multiple choice or what's called a multiple answer question. Uh, and this is a matching question. And um, with the multiple choice questions, like, um, do I have any multiple choice? Huh, I guess no multiple choice here. All right, then we can go through them all. So with the multiple answer question, oh, um, so I just got a question about late passes. Um, so I don't advertise this too much. Um, how do I put it? I do want to be careful. We are still in the first half of the semester. I don't want people to fall too far behind. That's why I'm trying to be careful here. Let me leave it here. Um, if, uh, so everyone started the class with the 12 lay passes, and I find that about half the class never use a lay pass. Which is great. <laughs> good job. Please keep up the good work. About 80 to 90 percent of the class, those polls turn out to be enough. Usually the first couple weeks, you use them more because you're getting used to the rhythm of the things and chapters went to are harder. Um, but so, so, you know, the big majority of the class does use the late pass, but the 12 are enough. Now, for a handful of people, um, maybe five, sometimes you do run out of late passes as you go through the semester. And this is what I would ask you to do. When you run out of late passes, message me. Let me know. And um, so it's never my intention that you run out of late passes, you are locked out of the modules, and bye-bye, you are no longer able to finish the class. That's never my intention. <laughs> so <laughs> when you run out of late passes, um, um, just uh, um, message me so that I can give you more late passes as you need. Uh, for people saying bye, bye, I'll see you later. Um, so, yeah, when, when and if you run out of late pass, message me, I'll give you more. So, um, I hope that addresses the question. I don't think anyone was running out now, but um, I'll check after this session. And if anyone has already run out, I'll give you more. Uh, all right, so let's uh, continue. So, uh, with these uh, multiple answer questions, uh, sometimes, um, hard for you to, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of choices. And sometimes you just submit blank and it will be partially right because the question counts as correct. The ones that you shouldn't have checked, that you don't check. <laughs> so, which, you know, I do think you get, should get credit for that, so you do get credit. But sometimes I think I see people doing, um, basically, you know, trying all the different combinations. And eventually you might get um, the correct answer, and but you don't necessarily know why it was correct. So um, in fact, I think I can, like without having read the question, by having tried them one at a time, now I know these two are correct. And you know, if you're just going for the point, you can do that, but um, open these questions, you will see them again in your exam and in a multiple choice uh, where there's a, a single answer and you have only one try basically. And you know, you should know why the correct answer is correct. So um, in the 20 minutes or so of remaining time, I thought the best use of time is to go over some of these questions. Um, matching question, I didn't have a good sense. I'll skip the matching questions. Uh, Leave you to those. I think I'll. Um, I, I think I'll, I'll, I would rather have you struggle with these questions, where the intent of these questions is that you would be the one measuring the period using the clock. Um, so uh, let me have you do that uh, rather than using the time here. Um, and you know, there's a hint video where I basically recorded the thing I was doing earlier. So. Um, uh, hint video doesn't give you the same period, or unless they shouldn't, but it kind of gives you how you should be measuring it. Um, so let me skip this also. Um, so in the first homework set, there's one, two, um, 
Oh, I guess so this is a bit of a calculation question. Um, yeah, so I guess let me do questions two, five, and six and seven. I think I can do them in about 10 minutes. And then uh, in the remaining time, let's see what questions we can do out of uh, the second half of chapter six on waves. So question two. So I technically got it right just by guessing them all. So, well, let's leave the correct answer here and kind of try to reason why it's uh, uh, why these answers are correct. So, hint says a uh, review with the section. The first figure in the section illustrates one period, and the last figure illustrates uh, in different contexts. All right, so, uh, first figure, uh, I see it does illustrate a period. So, starting from here, um, this position, it's moving back. B is when it's at the equilibrium. It continues to move this way. This is, it, and it reaches a C. Then it moves back. It reaches equilibrium again. It's not one period yet. And then it's all the way at this extended position E, which is same as A. That is one period. So from one maximum extension to back to maximum extension, that's one period. And you talked about something about the last figure. Okay, so this is the last figure. Oh, and it's giving you these graphs, which is actually kind of the easiest way to visualize period because you can literally see what's repeating. So um, what was in the first figure, you can see from um, measuring from the maximum extension to the next maximum extension, that's one. Um, or other ways you can measure period is the here. You can do it from equilibrium to another equilibrium, but not the very first one you see because then it's going in the wrong direction. But the second one you see where it's a, again an equilibrium and it's moving in the right direction. So those are what should be a way to measure period. And let's see here. So yeah, starting when the mass is at the highest point of motion, measure the time it takes for the mass to return to the highest point. That is what's uh, illustrated here. Um, or I guess if I'm being careful here, highest point. So that would be this position. And yeah, some, uh, no, plus x is highest point. Wait, this don't really match up with this. Never mind. The highest point, and then back to the highest point. That is the period is marked here. And uh, count the number of oscillations of mass in one minute. Well, um, that gives you um, number of oscillations per minute, but uh, the number of oscillations itself is in the period. You have to convert that somehow, that information somehow into how much time it takes for one oscillation. And so that's not it. Uh, we might get to that in question six or seven. Okay, starting when the mass is at the equilibrium position, measure the time it takes for the mass to return to the equilibrium position. So that's uh, what's shown here, is starting from here, coming back here. And that's only half a period, that's not a full period. So you have to go wait for the second time. Uh, starting when the mass is at the lowest point, measure the time it takes for the mass to return to the lowest point. That's another way, you can start from here, and wait for the mass to come back to here, that is one period. You can see here on the graph, it takes the same amount of time as it took here. All right, that's why those correct answers were correct. <laughs> All right, let's look at, I think it was question five. Okay, it says, choose all correct descriptions of properties of simple harmonic oscillator motion. So this is a, you know, it's a reading check. So that's why the hint says read. <laughs> Let me just go through each one kind of true false way. So the total energy of the oscillator in a simple harmonic oscillator motion remains constant over one cycle. Yes, simple harmonic oscillator is an example of a system which obeys conservation of mechanical energy, assuming no damping, no friction. So yes, total energy remains constant. Constant. The kinetic energy oscillates, the potential energy oscillates, but the total energy remains a total mechanical energy. Um, okay. 
larger amplitude of oscillation uh, takes a longer time. Oh, we just went over that earlier. It didn't. It took the same amount of time. Simple harmonic oscillation occurs around the stable equilibrium with the restoring forces. The restoring force, that's what Hooke's law is about. So yes, uh, when you have Hooke's law in effect, you get simple harmonic oscillator motion. The frequency of oscillation of a simple harmonic oscillator is independent of amplitude. We looked at the period, and as you will see when you read through it, the frequency is the reciprocal of the period. The period doesn't change, frequency also doesn't change. The speed of oscillator in a simple harmonic remains constant. So speed of it, and it was actually, um, it speeds up at the equilibrium, slows down at the end, so that's not right. Right, so I think I chose all three that are correct to these questions. Let's submit and see. Good. <laughs> all right. Good. That's good. Keep guessing. All right. Questions six and seven. So uh, what do I say in the hand? Um, ah. So here, um, I guess I'll do it in a quick and dirty way. Uh, so let me bring up annotations so that I can write on the screen. Um, so you are given this information, 30, 35 bits in 15 seconds. And every time I have an answer, I do like to look at what, uh, sorry, I'm trying to write crookedly. I like to look at what units come with the answer so that I kind of know what to do. It's says it's asking for heartbeat rate. So it sounds like a frequency, but it's asking for the beats per minute. So instead of how many bits we have in second, if we wanted that, I would do 35 divided by 15 seconds. But it's not warning per second, it's warning per minute. So I need to convert the second into minutes. So calling, recalling back to, I think, chapter two, or was it chapter one? Uh, you do have to do a unit conversion. So from second, you convert to minute, you do it by multiplying by one. So I multiply this by something that has seconds on the top, that'll cancel out the seconds, and I need to change it to minute, so minute on the bottom, which will remain and become my unit. Um, so I'm multiplying by number one, meaning the number on the numerator is the same as the number on the denominator. So by number, I mean the physical quantity, not just the one, two, three. So on the denominator, let me put one minute. Then one minute is not equal to one second, but it's equal to 60 seconds. So this uh, whole ratio is equal to one. And when I'm multiplying by this, I can say, oh, I didn't change anything. So I do that. So, okay, 15. Cancels out some of 60, so you get four. So 35 times four, oh, I can do that in my head, 140, I think. Four times three is 12, four times five is 20, yeah, 140 bits per minute. Oh, yeah, and I think I was told by one of my former students that that's a super fast. Maybe the patient just ran. <laughs> <laughs> so numbers are randomly generated. So sometimes you will get super fast numbers. Sometimes you will get numbers that are more reasonable. <laughs> but you know, uh, I don't think 140 is so fast that you will die if you are running just like you're exercising. Um, question seven. Um, so question seven is very similar to question six. The main difference is it's uh, asking for your answer in SI unit, and SI unit means for frequency, it's, you'll find it in the chapter, it's a hertz, and in the basic SI unit, oh, yeah, right, hertz, <laughs> and in basic SI unit, hertz is really one cycle per second. Um, so you look, look at how many seconds something takes, and so divide one cycle by the number of seconds, one period, that gives you the uh, frequency in hertz. So I have something that takes uh, two, three hundred. RPM is rotation revolutions per minute. So I have to do a unique conversion. 
Um, so it's a two, three, zero, zero times. Revolutions is one cycle, so good. That is already in the unit I want per minute. So this one minute has to change to seconds. So I multiply by one. 60, oh, wait, not 60. Uh, this should be one minute per 60 seconds. This ratio is equal to one because minute is equal one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So looking at through here, so oh, I'm just dividing 2300 by 60. So let me do that. So it's going to be equal to uh, 3, so 8, and then 20, uh, 0.3, I think, 38.3 hertz. Uh, let's try plugging it in, and if it says it's wrong, then I'll pull out a calculator and try it on a calculator. Um, all right, there you go. So it's question six and six, six and seven, it's a unit conversion exercise. 